Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. Uh, it's Alan Barry Labacan with the Rocks and Stocks News website. Um, we're doing another of our interviews with executives of junior mining companies, and we've got a brand new company here to talk about, and they're brand new to the market. Christina McCarthy is the CEO. Thank you very much for joining us today, Christina. Thanks very much for having me, Alan. I'm excited to share this, this story with you today. Well, it's a uh, pretty compelling story already out of the box. You've had a couple of really good news releases. And how I became aware of this is uh, Ewan Downey, who's one of your advisors, is a sponsor of the website, good friend of the show. I've been following his company since 2005. Ewan's one of the most talented uh, exploration geologists I know. And... Um, he gave you a very high recommendation to bring you on. He's got that Ruby Hill project, and I think they're about to make some pretty big news off of it. And you guys have some ground right in the close proximity. Why don't you start with a little bit about uh, where you guys are? Yeah, that's right. And that's a funny story how they got that project. And I'll tell you that in a minute here. Um, so we're located right in Nevada on the Battle Mountain Eureka Trend in we have the old we have the old original Ruby Hill mine, which was previously owned by Barrick. Um, Barrick had owned this project for, for many years, but had done nothing with it because they were focused on the big gold deposit next door. And this is a polymetallic deposit. This is gold, silver, lead and zinc. It's a high grade. It's called a carbonate replacement deposit. And so while Barrick was quite focused on the project next door, they hadn't drilled any holes in this. And it just sort of sat there in their archives for many years. You actually couldn't even find anything in the public domain about it uh, when you searched anything on the FAD project. Uh, and that's what it's called. It's, so there's, there's actually, it, it was in production in the 1950s for only a couple years um, after the, 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 the miners had intercepted a fault, it flooded the mine and they just weren't, you know, with technology that they had in the fifties, they just weren't able to dewater the mine back then. And so it was never revisited, which is, which is obviously the opportunity now for us. Um, but back then they actually had drilled up a, a non 43 101 resource, which we're right now drilling. And we have just released some of the first holes in decades, some of the first holes in over 50 years, and if you if you look back in our news releases, they're all hit high grade mineralization. Uh, the part where Ewan came into this was uh, again I knew about this project for a very long time, and he was a big consolidator in Nevada. And I showed him this project and thought um, you know it would be great to have you on my team. He wanted to acquire it for his company at the time when he was with Premier Gold, and then Premier Gold went through the re the uh, acquisition with of Equinox. Uh, and then they had spun out the um, I-80 assets here. So when I had showed him this project, um, I-80 took a 9% interest of my company at the time. Some of the other big shareholders are John Hathaway as well. Um, and so when I showed him the project, we went through so the, the due diligence together. And he said, wow, Chris, this is, this is such a great project. Uh, a year later, he acquired the project um, directly next to me. Um, so he was on the board of directors and he had to it was obviously a conflict of interest being now acquiring the project next to me. So he's now a strategic advisor to the board. Um, some other folks on the board, uh, a lot of you folks will know as well. Um, Jim Gowans. Uh, Jim Gowans is probably one of the best metallurgists on the globe. I'd say he's easy top five. He also was with Barrick previously. Uh, when I, when we showed him this project, he saw, he saw an opportunity and, um, joined our board as uh, chairman of the board, non-executive chairman of the board this past fall. Uh, while he is so amazing as, you know, being working on a zinc project previously, he had sold Arizona mining to mm -hmm. South 32 for 1.65 billion. So yeah, I know that story. Well, I uh, featured it in my report when it was really cheap. And, oh, you did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's great to have him on and, um, that's, you know, the, the synergies there with you and were uh, exactly that he, you know, was it, or he came on early on days with it, doing the DD with me on this and, and uh, using some of it and he helped, he, he lent me some of his geologists to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to help build the model and um, became a shareholder and then a year later buying the project next to me. So that's the Ewan Downey uh, synergy there. 
Well, he uh, he's mentioned your projects to me. And uh, first of all, I think uh, I-80 Gold has a potential to deliver some exceptional stuff at Ruby Hill. And I think we're on the cusp of hearing more about that. And some believe that this could be the next emerging region inside of Nevada. You guys have already delivered exceptional grade in your oxides and then also high grade. So let's start out with the oxides because that's the easiest to get to. And I think your your one of your uh, your executive chairman there um, will have a big influence on that because it's polymetallic in the oxides. Absolutely. So you would have seen just last week, um, actually it was on April 25th, we announced the first oxide holes drilled here in many, many years. And so just to put this in perspective, you know, this was, this was mined, very primitive mining methods at its tunnelings back in the early 1900s. And there hasn't been much exploration there at all since. Um, we acquired it. We drilled the very first hole in the oxide target. And if you look at the press release from the 25th, we intercepted 28 meters of four and a half grams gold equivalent and nearly 24 meters of 5.3 grams gold equivalent. That's all within the first 110 meters. So that's, that's potentially open pitable. That's. And, you know, to put that into context for the uh, uh, viewers, uh, Christine, that is about 10 X what a lot of open pit mines are being mined at these days. I remember when I first got in the business, nobody would talk about anything less than a gram. Now yeah. you're talking a half a gram and you guys are eight to 10 X that. So, uh, and pretty healthy wits. Yeah. I mean, 28 meters and 24 meters and all within the first 110 meters. It's pretty phenomenal. And we'll do some metallurgy work on that as well and to figure out how we process this, but we, we know it already worked because this was in production. They mined 1.6 million ounces of gold and 38 million ounces of silver right from the area that we're working on. And so we know that they mined it. We know they had recoveries. We have some of the old data and we actually know the recoveries from the underground target as well. So we know what, what they did worked and we know that that was also decades ago and having such more modern day technology and some of the brightest minds working with us on this project and some of the brightest minds coming up with far more advanced technologies for processing and mining the now, you know, decades later. Um, I mean, I think, I think that we are on the brink of being able to really bring something of value to the market here. And my belief is that we have one of the next big discoveries in Nevada with the, with e either the fad deposit, the main zone, or what we have near surface. And I'm really excited to be able to, ex you know, explore this for the first time in decades and show the market some more drill holes, just as we've done. Yeah, because it's not just, an, you know, what's in the oxide zones. You also had 21 grams over 10 meters. Uh, that has a metal factor of 210-ish uh, gram meters. Yeah. So, you know, that's pretty outstanding stuff to have both kind of targets. Well, yeah. high-grade high grade open pit target, and then you got your uh, thick intersection of high-grade as well. Yeah, and I mean, and probably the best way to explain this, if I show you a visual here of, of what this looks like. And so why don't I just share my screen quickly? That'd be great. They say a picture tells a story, uh, Christina. So go ahead and show your yeah. pictures. This will really put things in a perspective for everyone. Okay. So I'm just, can you see my screen okay? Yeah, no problem. So I'll stay in a PowerPoint version just so we can cut. So uh, it'll just be easier here. So right here, this is the original Ruby Hill mine. This is where that all that mining in this entire area, all in here, and you won't see a part of it on the page as well, but that's where that 1.6 million ounces of gold was mined at nearly 0.9 ounces per ton, which is phenomenal, and 38 million ounces of silver at 21 ounces per ton. And then this is the fault here. So these the this fault right here has down dropped this main fad deposit right here. And that's just sitting there waiting to be mined. They sunk the shaft in the 1940s. They mined between 1956 and 1958. 
they hit a fault and they flooded the mine. They abandoned the mine and it hasn't been worked since. They they had a couple um, of attempts later on to create these upper watersheds and they were unsuccessful because they just didn't have the technology to pump the water. Um, you know, nowadays, we it's we see it all over the world. They're pumping water out of these mines e very easily and efficiently. And so we have we don't believe it's going to be an issue at all for us now but you know again it's it was for that for us the fact that it didn't work for them back then was the opportunity for us now so if you just again kind of take taking this image here in your mind and remember this fault system and this area here in the red i'm going to zoom in on this red area here and show you something that's just to really put things into perspective so wow. I said that um, these guys had the old timers um, Hecla had owned this at one point and they had completed a 40 or sorry, a feasibility study in the 1970s. And in this area, right where you see that red circle, that's where they, def that's where they had done the underground drilling when they were mining. So they only had two years to co complete this drilling. So hardly, hardly any time at all. And during that two years that they did the underground drilling, they came up with this, this inventory, this mineral inventory. It's non 43101, but it's 3.9 million tons. And that grade right there, if, if I put it in a gold equivalent grade, it's 13.6 grams per ton gold equivalent. You know, Christina, and, I, and live down, I live down in uh, Mexico, in the silver capital of the world, Zacatecas. And oh, yeah. uh, I've been to many mines there. Uh, and uh, 196 grams of silver alone makes them mine down here. Yeah. And so for us, it was really exciting because they, I mean, when they were drilling these holes, it was taking them nearly nine months to drill one hole in the 40s. So eventually they sunk the shaft. They started just they just started mining the deposit underground because once they, they knew it was there, they defined this resource in only two years. And then um, and only in, in this drilling that's done outside of that red circle was not included because of just because of drill spacing, they couldn't put it, they couldn't include it. But if you look at this one of these holes that's a far distance away, nearly 200 meters away, it, it hit 92 feet of 19 grams gold, 476 grams silver and over 20% lead zinc. I mean, that's a phenomenal wow. growth right there. And that's wow. outside of what they had deemed like the actual ore body. So for us, you know, if I kind of zoom out again and just show you, they didn't, they didn't drill. They, they had only a few holes that they had drilled all out here. And all of this is untested. And there's another fault here, which is again, we know faults are sort of these conduits for fluid and gold mineralization or mineralization in general that likes to tr travel along these faults and the, the and this is all down uh down drop extensions of that favorable geology so if you look again right here all of that purple that you see that's the host rock that's Eldorado dolomite and in here this slide i'll show you one more time they've just barely tested it some of these holes ended in 10 grams gold and at the end of the hole and you know they just they just couldn't they just didn't have the technology to uh, pump the water to to continue their underground drilling out here so you know christina one of the things i'm always looking for in these kind of deposits is continuity of grade and yeah. you know it's it's very clear in the resource area that you've got exceptional continuity but then the deeper holes seem to you know give you lots of arm waving ability because uh, yeah. it looks like the, the system continues. That's right. And I'll actually just on that point, speaking of continuity, if you just sort of look at that area again. So again, we are the very first company to drill this in decades. And we are, these are the very first batch of holes that we put out right here. Um, and these black lines that you see, these are the holes. That's that's the shaft. Again, this is around 700 meters depth. This is what we're calling the fat main zone, this red area. So right where that old resource was that I showed you in that red circle on that previous slide, we did a 200 meter step out to the east and we hit this hole right here, which was almost 37 meters of 13 grams gold equivalent. Oh. So when you talk about lateral continuity, we drilled another one in that and another one. So for us, so far it's demonstrated the lateral continuity and the same sort of high grade. And so 
we're just we're just going to try to continue to prove that up to find a resource so that we can get to a point where there's conviction in the market. Well, that la that lateral continuity is there, and then it should continue deeper based on the drilling. Well, yeah, and then again, this is all open; it's just uh, untested. We there's only a few holes that were drilled in that area that um, hit, still hit. If you see the slide here, they still hit mineralization, and then one real big outlier over here that actually hit um, half a percent of copper, even so. We're pretty excited to see what's down here. But for now, I think that, you know, we focus on drilling this, defining and confirming the mineralization that we believe is there, and then also continuing this upper area here. And if I just go back to that Hold slide on again, one minute you before that. you go up, um, it looks like you have two vaults there that could be uh, coming together, and that could be a very good place to have consolidation of your your zone and your grades uh, pop up. Yeah, well, there's a lot of, I mean, we didn't want to make the slide too busy here, but there's a lot of thrust faulting here and it's, it's which really kind of makes up all of this purple geology here. And that's the host rock. It's, it's exactly the rock unit that you want to be in for, for Nevada. And so the reason why this deposit is so exciting and why I am so excited to be part of it is that um, carbonate replace this, this is a carbonate replacement deposit. So it's polymetallic. Typically you don't see a, a very high gold grade in CRDs. Well, the reason why this one is having that higher gold grade is because it's all because of where it's located in Nevada. And right beside us, we have a Carlin deposit right here. And so that Carlin deposit is what's with factoring into the higher gold grades. So we're unique in the fact that there's this carbon replacement deposit and it's got an overprint of Carlin style alteration, which is bringing that higher gold grade in. So this could very well be one of the highest grade CRDs on the globe, which could average around, you know, eight grams gold equivalent. If you, if you sort of really put this in perspective and understand that the, what the, you know, being this, this type of deposit and having that, Carlin influence on it. And so then those CRD deposits can get pretty sizable. Yeah, well, CRDs typically don't tend to be very big, but um, In yeah, we don't know what's at depth because we haven't tested below those, those offset. I those. meant in ounces. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but right here, that's, you know, right. So just to kind of put this in perspective, I-80 acquired the project just to the north of us. Um, I, you know, j maybe just over a year after we did and I, just a year over, they were already a large shareholder. And so they're focusing on this Archimedes pit and a target called Ruby Deep, as well as another target that's called the Blackjack target. And that's the base metal pro target that they liked about this project and that they that is associated with our project um I, you know i've heard some discussion around i80 that they will potentially converting their operations over here within around five to six years into a base metal operation which would work out very well for us they have all of their per, their permits every permit they need and we are on patented ground which makes it a much quicker time to permit for us as well so um, obviously there's the synergies there, but we don't want to just, you know, sort of be a one pony show and that I80 is the only, you know, company that we have to work with here. We want to be able to um, appeal to many investors. And so from that perspective, I think, you know, we'll continue to get the create awareness, continue to get the story out there and, you know, diversify ourselves with our investors, because I think that, in, you know, in, in this type of gold environment, you know, there's, we could appeal to many other, uh, well, many other companies. You know, uh, Christina, I've had a chance to look at some of the drill core from uh, Ruby Hill, and wow. uh, it sure Simple, looks like it? It, it's going to carry some big grades there and uh, a thick intersection yeah. of mineralization. So I think there's a pretty good chance uh, that there's going to be a lot of eyes looking at this immediate area around I-80, and you guys have such yeah. an exceptional uh, project right out of the gate as a public company. Yeah. I know it's pretty, it's pretty amazing to have been able to, and I'll just stop sharing for a minute here, but 
Um, I'm pretty excited that we were able to get this project, which is again, to think that it's there in Nevada, how, you know, the, this, this was just sitting there left forgotten about. And again, it's because of, it's because Barrick doesn't focus on polymetallics. They're very much all gold and they just had this sitting there. And in fact, um, Jim Gowans, our non-executive chairman of the board, he remembered this project when he was working with them. He always thought it was so interesting, but they just, it wasn't a focus for them. And so for us, I think Nevada continues to be, I mean, it's one of the, it's, it, Nevada accounts for almost 80% of the U.S. annual gold production. It's one of the most favorable jurisdictions to, to mine. You have some of the most, the biggest, most prolific gold belts in the world. And we're right there. And we've got a project that hasn't been drilled in decades. And we're just putting out the first results in in into a pre-existing target something that was already known about something that already has my a, a history of mining and i think that we're just awakening the sleeping giant here and we are going to potentially have the next big discovery in nevada and we'll just keep on putting out drill holes like that and i think the market will reward us for it yeah i mean what else could you ask for nevada um you've got that high grade oxide that could be a starter pit then you've yeah. got the high high grade at depth that looks wide open to keep growing. And yeah. beyond I-80 and the Ruby Hill, you're in close proximity to some big mines as well. That's right. Yeah. And I have to say, it makes us very nimble in, you know, being able to adjust to market conditions, having a near surface oxide target where you can preserve treasury, preserve the cash and drill near surface holes if we're in a seemingly, you know, worse environment than, than we are now or, or a better gold environment where we have the capital to drill those deeper holes and we keep, if, if we continue to hit and we have sort of had that sniper approach where we're targeting holes that we know um, are going to, you know, instead of, you know, taking widely big uh, risky step outs and deeper holes, that are, you know, way beyond our property, we could still, you know, create again, just take a systematic approach where we're stepping out 50 meters, 50 meters, 100 meters, and create that lateral continuity. And again, give the conviction to the markets of what what is potentially there. And so I think we're nimble in that, you know, with the near surface, the the main fad zone at depth, and that we're polymetallic. So, if, you know, gold is not so much in favor right now well we have the the polymetallics and the, the green factor right so um i think it makes us a pretty diverse and well a very attractive company for many investors and their investment criteria christina before we close i wanted to um say and talk a little bit about your career because yeah. i don't <laughs> often find companies that come out of the gate Checking off all the things that I look for in a junior, share structure tight, cash in the bank, exceptional jurisdiction, early success with drill holes. This is a recipe for success, Christina, and I, and I don't think it's an accident. So why don't you talk a little bit about your career and what enabled you to put something like this together? Yeah, um, you know, so I'm a geologist by background. Um, and after university, spent uh, two years in the field working in Norway and Sweden on volcanic massive salt by deposits. Uh, from there, I was able to, you know, when the markets kind of tanked in 2008, came back to Toronto and I've been in the capital markets for nearly 14 years. I've been in various roles such as um, re equity research, which, which was for a couple of years on institutional sales desk at Haywood, which is Again, the full rounded view of how the markets work, as well as building an exempt market dealer with some ex brought folks. And then uh, I worked as director of corporate development for Rob McEwen at McEwen Mining for five years, which was a, a learning experience in itself. I've spent, you know, five years traveling with Rob and learning everything I could from him. And he was very supportive of, of you know, any ideas that you had. And so that was phenomenal to work with him. And then um, I was involved with uh, Palisade Gold to create the the newfound gold story, and so I was in part of the um, support to take that company to the public markets 
when it did. And I, that was all actually the geologists that we all went to school with, um, Denis Labulette and Greg Matheson. And we, uh, so that was a lot of fun. And then, and then also worked with New World Peru as um, VP corporate development. And we uh, sold that company to First Light Capital. So it's been a lot of fun, a lot of uh, exciting times over the past uh yeah, it's 14 years in the capital markets, and I'm very fortunate to have worked with such bright people and learn, as you know, just off some of the best folks in the industry. Um, obviously, Rob being one, um, and you know, just being able to, you know, and Ewan Downey, obviously, of course, as well. He's been phenomenal, and just working with Jim Gowans lately as well. Um, very excited about uh, being able to take everything that I've learned from them and applying it to to this company, to Paycor, and hopefully creating uh, more success for shareholders. Well, I've been very fortunate, Christina, throughout my career to have been associated with some of the best people in the industry. And uh, you're doing very well with your men the, for your mentors. Um, I'm very impressed with the, with the fact that you're just brand new company and you come out checking off all the boxes. I mean, and you currently have only 28 million shares out, 51 million valuation. You're in the best jurisdiction in the world, and you're hitting with the truth machine. Yeah, that's right. Well, just stay tuned, and uh, we're just going to keep on drilling this aggressively with two rigs, and keep on putting drill results out. So I hope to, uh, I hope, I hope not to let you down, and continue to <laughs> create some something pretty valuable here. Well, keep keep at it, Christina, and I've got a lot of confidence we'll be doing more of these interviews in the future. Thanks a lot, Alan, and thanks for having me. It's been great. I'm going to close it off. And we'll have a chat at the end there, uh, Christina. How's that? Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> so there you go, folks. I mean, uh, in our wrap-up, I kind of um, presented the closing arguments of what I, why I have had Christina on the show today. Um Good share structure, lots of money in the bank, cheap valuation. Most importantly, they're hitting with the truth machine in an area that is about to get very heated up. I have a lot of confidence in Ewan Downey as an explorer. I've looked at the drill core from their uh, project right beside Paycor. Uh, I think they're going to they're on the verge of delivering some exceptional stuff and bring a lot of investor interest to this area. And then you start going broader and you've got uh, Christina's company with, a, with an exceptionally good project, uh, whether you look at it as an oxide project or you look at it as a high grade underground project and they've got infrastructure, best jurisdictions, everything's going for these guys. And they've got two drill rigs, lots of money. They'll be generating news, and I expect to be uh, talking more about uh, Paycor in the future. So on that note, as always, my shows are for information purposes only. It's important for you to speak with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. And most importantly, do your homework. Go to the uh, website of Paycor, check out their uh, corporate presentation, I think you'll be very impressed. Look at their news releases. That's a very impressive couple news releases right out of the gate for this company. And um, I, I'll be talking more about them in the future. So on that note, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.